of Utah. And in this video, I'm going to go over analyzing a circuit with a MOSFET in it when we have AC sources. So the first goal is to be able to draw the AC model for the MOSFET. So we have, again, for the AC, you're going to rely on the DC values to get the AC parameters. So the first parameter is um, GM, which is the transconductance, which is the partial derivative of ID with respect to VGS. And when we do that, we can get GM in either of these three forms. So these would be the values for GM. They're based on the DC value for VGS or the DC value for ID. So these are both the DC values. And then we have the hybrid pi looks very similar to how the hybrid pi looked for the BJT, except we notice that there's no longer a resistance between here. So between our gate and our source, the source is like the emitter, the gate is like the base. We don't have a resistance. We have still the dependence of GM, that transconductance, with the voltage between those two, gate and source. So let's look at how to draw this hybrid pi. So say we have this DC circuit. I've given you already the DC analysis here. And when we draw this, we're gonna, I usually suggest starting with the hybrid pi. So we're gonna start with the gate of the transistor. And then it's dependent on GM and VGS. And one thing to note here, this VGS is AC. It is not the DC value. So you need to be careful not to put in the DC value that you find for this circuit. So this VGS is your AC value. So we see here that we have a 12K resistor that goes to ground at the gate. And then remember for the AC, we're going to remove all DC so that 12 volts goes to ground. And then here we have the 6K. And then the capacitors for the AC model are going to be shorted. So we will have then a short for CG, and then this will be our VSIG, which will be the input to this. The drain here we can see is going to be, again, the 12 volts goes to ground. And on the source side, we're gonna have the 10K, and that minus 12 volts is also gonna to go to ground. So this would be our hybrid Pi drawing for this circuit. So from here we can analyze things such as the input resistance which is at the node going in here. So it's going to see this 6k and 10k in parallel so our Rn would be 6k in parallel with 12k. And our R out is going to be looking in to this node here. So I'm going to go over this R out in the equivalent resistance video because that is going to be a common form that we're going to see and I'm going to show you how to analyze for that one. And here would be our V out. So this would be how to draw the hybrid pi. So the next step in AC analysis is to analyze the circuit <coughs> for all these components. So I'm gonna do another example. Here is the procedure that's laid out for this. And I just went kind of through those steps. So you can use these notes to refer back to that. <laughs> so, first step is to draw the hybrid pi if it's already drawn for you. Then we're going to find the AC parameters based on those DC values. So, for GM1, 
we're going to use the equation for either the VGS or ID. I'm going to remove these and say let's just do one for the VGS for the first one and then for the second one we're going to use the ID. So the equation for this is going to be Kn prime W over L VGS minus VTH. And this is my VTH is equal to one volt in this case. So we have two milli, VGS is given as the 1.5, and then the VTH is one. And so we get a value of one milli amp per volt. And the equation here is 2 Kn prime W over L ID, and it's the square root, so it's the square root of 2 times 2 milli, and then ID is 156.25 milli. And so this gives us a value of 25 milliamp per volt. So these are our two parameter values that we need to solve this circuit. Next, we're going to find R in and R out. And so for R in, we're going to go from this node to ground, and we're going to ignore this V sig. So in the equivalent resistance video, I show you how to transform this into an equivalent resistance of 1 over GM. And so for R in, our, our N equivalent is going to be a series, 3K plus 1 over GM1. And that gives us 3K plus 1 over 1 milli for a value of 4 kilo ohms. So R out is drawn in front of RL, so we're going to ignore RL. And it says that up here too, ignore the resistive load, RL. And what we're going to find, again, the result from that equivalent resistance video is that on the top of this, the dependent source looks like an open. So that means this 2K looks like an open and R out is just going to be 20K. So the next step is to find the gain. So to find the gain, we I usually like to start at the output and write an equation for my V out equation. So V out in this case is going to be a minus GM2 VGS2 times 20K in parallel with 20K. So all I did was combine these two resistors, and then the current flowing through there is the same as the current flowing through these, the 2K, which is that GM2 VGS2. I could have done a current divider and then multiplied it by 20K would be another way to find VO. So now I see I have VGS2 is an unknown, and I noticed here that VGS2 is the voltage here call it V2, minus the voltage here, call that V1. So for V1, I notice that all the current flows through here is going to be GM2, VGS2. And V2, I need to find, again, the current going through here multiplied by 24K. So V2 is going to be this I times 24K, and I can be found from a, volt, a current divider, so GM1 VGS1 times 20K, or it would be times one over 40K and then divided by 1 over 40K plus 1 over 20K, or 
the addition of these. So whichever form you use for the current divider, And so VGS2 is going to be V2 minus V1. So I plug all this in. So minus GM1 VGS1 times 20K over, that's going to be 60K. And then I multiply that current by 24K. So this is the current portion and then times 24K, and then minus GM2 VGS2 times 1K is my V1. So now I see from this equation I have VGS2 on one side and VGS2 on the other side. So I need to combine both of those so I bring over that minus GM2 VGS2 over to the other side. And combining this, I get VGS2 and then 1 plus GM2 times 1K. And now I can divide this quantity onto this side. And that will give me just VS, VGS2 is equal to that. So now I see I have a VGS1. So I need to write VGS1, and VGS1 is going to be the voltage here, but I notice that there's no sources, and so this is going to be just zero volts. With it dangling, there's no current flow through there. And so this is going to be the current GM1 VGS1. And so I have VGS1 is zero minus the voltage here, which is plus V sig plus GM1 VGS1 times 3K. And again, I have VGS1 on both sides. So I need to combine those into one. So I bring over from the other side that this is a minus times both those positives, so this will become a positive GM1 VGS1 times 3K is equal to a minus VSIG. So combining these, I have 1 plus GM1 times 3K minus VSIG, and then I divide by the 1 plus GM1 3K, and that will get it rid of it from that side. And now I, want, I need to combine all of these, so going back to the V out equation, I have minus GM2 times the 20Ks in parallel give me 10K times the VGS2. So this is minus GM2 times 10K, and now VGS2. So going to the VGS2, so then I'm also going to replace the VGS1 
and I can multiply all those out with the values I had for BGS or GM1 and GM2 at the top. And this gives me, I can divide by the V sig. So I end up with a value of minus 19.2 volt per volt for my gain. Thank you for watching. This concludes this video.